Thank two. Live group bullseye. One zero zero six seven twenty five thousand spades. Thank one hostile. Middle. North. Understand crank north. On the fourteenth of October, nineteen forty seven, Captain Charles Chuck Yeager of the United States Air Force climbed aboard his Bell X one aircraft slung beneath the B twenty nine Super Fortress. Following his release. He leveled off at 40,000 feet above the Mojave Desert and fired the third of the aircraft's four rockets. Initially, the ride was rough and control almost non-existent. Then, as he neared the speed of sound, Mark 1, the ride smoothed out and control was regained. Quickly, the needle went to 1.02, paused several seconds and then jumped to 1.06. And that was it. Chuck Yeager had earned his place in history as the first man to pierce the dreaded sound barrier. Although news of the achievement was largely ignored, even suppressed, it only served to show just how much ground the British had lost in the quest for supersonic flight. But it put the The lightning, however, soldiered on until 1988, when numbers 5 and 11 squadrons traded in their lightnings for Tornado F-3s, 40 years after the original requirement had been formulated. The lightning, which was created at the beginning of the Cold War, had survived to witness its conclusion. Today, the Lightning is remembered for its blistering performance, a performance that even some of the most advanced fighters in the world cannot match. Yet the Lightning set more benchmarks in aircraft design than speed alone. Highly swept wings, low tailplanes. They've all got, all got them. You have a look, look round all the jets, the, the um, uh, exotic Russians, F-16, um, uh, F-15, uh, the, um, e excluding the French, which is another matter, um, the, the EF-2000, uh, EF they all have swept wings, low tailplane. And that, that is a legacy of the Lightning. The Lightning started the, the fashion, and that's the way they'll always be. Unless you go to a pure Delta... I think that we had um, <clears throat> hoped that we would go through the sand barrier and level flight as opposed to f a screaming dive downhill. I mean, the hunter could um, go through the sand barrier downhill, and uh, <clears throat> the American similarly in their saber, etc. But to go through it and level flight, that is an achievement. And uh, it was certainly at that time. And I think it made every Briton proud, every man that was involved in aviation anyway. Oh no, I think the Lightning is um, a nice little milestone in our aviation history. I think the legacy of the Lightning, as far as our Royal Air Force is concerned, is that it did bring technology to the forefront of the people that had to fly it, service it, operate it, control it uh, in the uh, Sector Operations Centre. It was a high-tech beastie for its time and luckily our very senior officers now, both uh, air crew and uh, engineers, uh, were brought up with that concept. So. I think it probably made our Air Force much more, tech or helped to make us technology conscious rather than frightened of technology. That's just my view. I would have thought that uh, certainly in terms of 
recognition that you need an airplane with a dogfighting capability or an air combat capability, that that's been seen to be a continuing requirement and we're now into Eurofighter because with the, if you like, the, the, the Phantom and then the Tornado F3, I haven't operated the Tornado F3, know very little about it, but reputedly it doesn't have, you know, it wasn't designed, it doesn't have that sort of capability. Um, also, the need, if you like, for the supersonic dash is still seen to be there. Uh, and aerodynamically, I'm sure the Lightning uh, contributed to that. Two contacts. Two groups, 